huge studies that show, you know, the incidence of spraying of glyphosate with rise of diabetes, rise of autism, you know, rise of depression and anxiety. It's, it's, they're correlated. It may not be a causal, but it's definitely up there. Welcome to Evolving Ageless. Remember, this is the enlightened woman's antidote to aging. So as you know, I'm your host, Michelle Drylick, and I am on a mission to change the way we as women age. And so each week I'm joined by experts in their fields, and they're giving us the latest and greatest in their experiences and their research. And so today I am joined by someone you may recognize as the supernatural mom. Her name is Beth Greer. Beth, welcome. It's so good to have you here. Great to be here, Michelle. Love what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I love what you are doing. And so I just want to let everyone know, you have a book called The Supernatural Home. You've created, it's an award-winning documentary on toxins and the home. Um, you're an environmental toxins expert and an educator. So you teach others about cleaning up our environment, not just our, not just our community environment, but the environment within our own homes. That's where we spend the most amount of our time. And so Beth, Beth has an amazing story. And I think it's probably best if you just start off by telling us about your journey and how this all started for you. Sure. Um, so I was running a large multinational company called The Learning Annex. This is about 18 years ago. Um, it was in six cities and I was passionate about it and working really hard and, and I guess kind of stressed, but I wasn't really aware of the stress level. Um, and I developed pain in my shoulder and I uh, went to the chiropractor and after five sessions, he said, you know, you need to go get an MRI because it's not getting better. He thought I had a herniated disc. Well, what the MRI showed was I had a mass in my chest and I was like, what? You know, the, the, the technician came down, you know, it, it was alarming. He's, and, um, Anyway, they did a biopsy and they discovered I had this tumor. It was called a nerve root a schwannoma tumor in my, in my chest cavity. And it was very painful. The, uh, the nerve was pressing on the, on the nerves. The tumor was pressing on the nerves that ran down my arm and my, my hands were getting numb, my, the first three fingers in my right hand. And so um, I thought, you know, how could this happen to me? This is insane. And uh, I went to see three top surgeons and they all couldn't agree how to access it. One wanted to cut me under my collarbone. The second one wanted to go in under my armpit. And the third one said, no, 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 we're going to remove one of your ribs from the back. You know? And I'm like, my head is swirling. And I'm thinking, well, what can I do? I don't want to have surgery. It's, it's so scary. Now, it was benign. It wasn't cancerous. But they all said, you know, this could turn cancerous at any minute. You need to have surgery right away. And I don't know where I got the strength. But um, I just decided, you know, I wanted to see, take another route. I went down to a place in San Diego called the Optum Health Institute where we did cleansing um, both with our food. So basically um, raw vegetables and green drinks and colonics and like that. So it was cleansing from the inside out. And um, one of the things we did was meditate and talk to our disease. And so uh, I asked, you know, why are you here? What's, what's your message to me? And the word that came to me was to simplify. And I realized I wasn't really leaving, leading a simple life. I was eating out all the time. Um, I never cooked. You know, was, I know many of us, you know, listening could relate to that. We're, we're eating takeout. We're eating in restaurants. And we don't know how the food's prepared, really. What kind of, um, is it organic? What kind of cooking oils are they using? What kind of cookware are they using, Right. Um, so I started, um, this process of simplifying both, um, by put what I was putting in my body and, you know, just being at this, uh, at this uh, holistic retreat center for, it was about, you know, it was a week long after about four or five days, I noticed the pain started to, to diminish just slightly. And I thought, oh, I'm onto something here. And so when I went home, I thought, well, what else can I simplify? And I remember putting um, some moisturizer on my skin and I looked at the label and there was like a paragraph worth of, of chemicals in there. 
And with my background as a journalist, I started researching and I realized that these are toxic to our, to our health and they get into our bloodstream through our skin very quickly. And then I remember I was cleaning. I had a small child at the time and I was spraying down her, her um, countertop, you know, with Windex. And I looked at the, the back of the label. It said, precautionary statement, hazardous to humans and domestic animals. And I thought, oh, my God, you know, this is crazy. Like, why, why, why am I using this? But I, I grew up with it. I just thought, well, it was safe, you know. So I went through a process of just um, really taking a close look at what I put in my body, so from the food and uh, the water that I drank to what I put on my skin, my makeup, my personal care products, deodorant, toothpaste, and then what I was cleaning with. And also, um, you know, a big issue was electromagnetic fields, which weren't as much of an issue as they are now back 18 years ago. But um, to make a long story short, it took about nine months of doing this uh, cleansing and um, the pain went away. And then about six months later, I had it scanned and the tumor had disappeared. And, you know, this is a huge wake up call to me that our bodies are self healing. We just go back to as close to nature as possible and, and just be aware that we are surrounded and bombarded with a lot of toxins in our, in our home environment. And, um, but there are easy, simple things you can do to, to make simple switches. Man. Okay. So there's a lot to unpack there. I just want to take a moment, first of all, and say how amazing that you followed some intuition that you had there. Um, the interesting thing is, thank goodness you had a, a symptom that was, you were able to see your symptom regress as you were improving your health. And so that's fantastic. Um, and not everyone has that. A lot of people check with their physicians and work with their doctors and understand and follow things along. And so your your path is is your path. Everyone has their own path. But what I love about what you're saying at the core of everything is our body's innate ability to heal. It is constantly in a state of healing, whether we feed it garbage or we try to feed or we feed it healthy, nutritious things. It does a better job with healthy, nutritious things. And the way I say that is if you sprain your ankle, you're going to heal from it and you might eat garbage. That's <laughs> proof that your body can heal always. That's but a good point. That's a good point. You might yeah. have scar tissue. You might not heal the right way, but there are other, you know, when we start factoring in healthy and we talk a lot on this podcast, uh, I know the listeners know that eating healthy foods, putting the right minerals and vitamins and other compounds that our body uses to heal in allows us to heal better, faster. And so it sounds like the combination of the, the minerals and the vitamins and the compounds that you were taking in were quite helpful. But I love this idea also of recognizing just the environment that you live in and how to back away from that. And right. So let's talk about toxins because <laughs> I think it's a big deal. And I don't want to forget, we're definitely going to talk about EMF, electromagnetic fields, uh, because I right. know 5G is around the corner. Right. And so that's pretty toxic. Talk about yes. that. Those are toxic too. Um, yes. So I just want to say that the word toxins can be scary to people. And I just want to reassure everybody that, you know, I don't want this to be scary. I want this to be life enhancing and very simple solutions. And let's, you know, keep it positive because um, it can be daunting. You know, I don't want you to think like, to, I don't want you to be afraid of your home or the stuff that you're ex being exposed to. But if you start to make small changes like I did, um, you'll see a dramatic shift in your health and vitality. Um, in fact, I spoke to Dr. Dale Bredesen this is before his book, The End of Alzheimer's, came out. I had met him socially, and I told him my story, and he said, oh, my God, I've never heard of anyone eliminating a schwannoma tumor. Um, you should be in the medical textbooks. And then he said to me, Beth, what you did was you changed your epigenetics by changing you know, what, you're, what you're doing in your environment. He goes, and that's what I'm doing to, for the Alzheimer's patients, and that's how he's reversing Alzheimer's, by making shifts in their environment, getting rid of the toxins putting them on organic food like that. So. You just gave me goosebumps. I don't know <laughs> if anyone else just got goosebumps. 
You're absolutely right. And I, maybe it's because I live in this world of epigenetics. So just to remind everyone, we have genes. We're born with genes that we get from our, our parents. And those genes are, can determine certain things. Like we know our genes determine our eye color, our hair color, right? Whether we're going to have long fingers or short fingers. So those are just common traits, right? But genes also determine you might have pre, pre, be genetically predisposed to certain medical conditions or certain outcomes like, as, as you mentioned, Dr. Bredesen with Alzheimer's. But the thing about epigenetics is that what's interesting is our DNA changes, the actual part of our DNA that dictates how genes, we say, express themselves, whether they turn on, just think of them as switches. They turn on and they turn off. And so the way we live in our environment, you might have a gene for diabetes that never turns on because you eat well and you exercise and you sleep well and all those good things. Yet the same, another person may have the same gene and based on how they live their lifestyle, they flip the switch. That's epigenetics. That's how our environment around us, including what we take into our bodies and surround and put on our bodies, flips our switches. So let's talk about that because that's mm -hmm. huge for what you're doing. Let's talk about, we put things on our skin, those, those, any kinds of chemicals that we put on our skin, they find their way into our bloodstream, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And ultimately in the epigenetic world, change our DNA. Absolutely. So just tell us what things are we looking for? Right. So you want to look for, uh, in your personal care products, um, especially things like your deodorant. So you, some, like I, I go into people's homes and I help them kind of figure out their mystery illnesses. And I always kind of find <laughs> what's going on. So, and it's always a simple switch. So for example, you know, one of my clients was using a natural deodorant like Tom's and I thought, well, that might be okay. And then you look at the label and the, the, this number one ingredient was propylene glycol. Well, guess what? That's found in antifreeze, right? So do we really want to be putting that under our armpits every day? Um, the makeup and the, the, the creams and lotions that we're using, you know, just start to pay attention to, to some of the ingredients on there. And um, on my website, I, I have lists of things. And in my book, um, I, I talk about the top ones, but a couple that come to mind are parabens. You want to avoid methyl, propyl, you know, those are uh, antimicrobial um, ingredients that they put in there. And, um, you know, just as, as simple as possible. And um, the Environmental Working Group has a great website uh, ewg.org, where you can go on their skin safe. Uh, they have a database where you can plug in the products that you're using and see how it's ranked. If it's you know green is good, and you want to you want to stay in the green. So that is a fantastic resource. I actually have not heard of that. So okay. I can like choose the products that I'm using, like my skincare or yes. my shampoo or things like that, and it will right. tell me. It, yes, it'll grade it. It grades it and they have thousands, I think thousands of, of products, you know, all the most popular ones and some obscure ones even. So, yeah, so, so that, oh, I mean, great. so for example, what I, for deodorant, I use baking soda. I just put baking soda into a, a salt shaker and I go like this and I go like this in the morning and I'm good to go. It works like a charm. It doesn't stop moisture, it doesn't stop wetness, but it will prevent odor from happening. Like in your refrigerator, right? So works. So um, clever, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So, it's so uh, obvious, right? It was right under our noses. Yeah. So speaking of noses, you know, one of the, th one of the items in our homes that can be really toxic and really trigger a lot of um, issues for people is fragrance, artificial fragrance, scent. So um, one of my clients had a chronic cough for years and she was on codeine cough syrup and she was on inhalers. And she said, you know, when I sleep at a hotel, I don't cough. And it's like, hello, well, there's got to be something going on in your home. And so when I walked into her bedroom, she had like 20 scented candles, you know, along her, her window ledge there. And, I, and, I, and my throat started itching immediately. And I said, you know, well, here's your culprit. And she's like, oh, you know, these were gifts and these are expensive and they relax me. And but she didn't realize that they were really toxic. And so I said, well, let's just try and experiment. And I put them in a bag and took them out. Um, and, you know, 
<laughs> she called me a couple of days later to tell me that her cough is gone, which is really amazing. But the thing about if you see the word fragrance on a label, it can mean a minimum of like a hundred different synthetic chemicals up to uh, could be thousands. It's, it's really kind of crazy. So if you start to think about all the fragrances we're exposed to from the fragrances that we use on our body to our dish soap to the laundry detergent, you know, you just, they just start adding up and adding up and think about all those chemicals that are, we're being bombarded with. So mm -hmm. a simple switch, you know, for her was I had her get um, beeswax candles and one of the other things is lovely scent, um, natural, right? And th the thing is that the wicks and some of these candles have a metal piece in it to make the wicks stand up to make the candle burn longer. And so guess what that metal is made out of? It's lead. lead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to guess. <laughs> right? I'm thinking about it. Yes, right. Who, and, and you're vaporizing it, right? Because That's it's right. burning. Yes. And, and it was making lead smoke out of lead that's right so when i looked up at her ceiling she oh. had black soot up there and this is going into her lungs too and it you know so yeah. yeah so this was a woman who also used you know scented everything hair products um everything was scented her her facial sprays and all so we just it was a process of starting to just wean away from some of those scents and it really made a huge difference in her health I love that trade-off though, beeswax candles, because you're right. They have a natural scent of honey Yes, because that's they're right. made from bees. Right. So uh, much cleaner, such a clean option. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So what else? Where, where else are we finding things? So, you know, our food, I wanted to talk about things that a lot of people are not really talking about very much, and that's artificial food dyes. Um, it used to be a big deal back in the, I don't know, I think it was the 80s with the fine gold diet, right? For kids that had uh, ADHD and all that. But now, like, no one is really, really mentioning it. And, you know, the thing is that artificial food dyes are very hard on our nervous systems. And they've done studies in Europe where they've tested uh, these food dyes on children. And it causes temper tantrums in normal kids, um, about 100 milligrams. Actually, it's only about 60 milligrams of food dyes. And if you look at an average meal that um, many kids are eating, but even adults, you know, say some macaroni and cheese and maybe some M&Ms or something in an orange soda, you're up well over 100 milligrams of food dyes. And so uh, food dyes are hidden and they're, they're, they're very pervasive. They're in our yogurt, they're, they're in our baked goods and all that. So um, at Gatorade, for example, I know a lot of people go to the gym and they're drinking Gatorade. It has food dye in it. So uh, they're in our vitamins, really, you know, they're in our cough syrup. So um, really start to pay attention to that because it can really impact your nervous system and, um, just avoiding that can help you relax and avoid anxiety and ADD and all that. So um, the, way anyway. I've always, the way I've understood artificial dyes, so correct me if this is not true, is, you know, in kids, it can cause, it always has a neural, like very often has a neurological mm -hmm. effect, but in kids, they'll, we, it presents as ADD, ADHD, focus, attention, um, aggression, things like that. Mm -hmm. In adults, very often it can, be anxiety, uh, overwhelming sadness, mm -hmm. fatigue, things like that. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right on. So there you go. It's, it's impacting us uh, in ways that we, that could, that are surprising. And so, you know, start to become a detective in your, in your refrigerator, go, you know, and in your pantry, look and see if, if you see colors like FDC number one, or, you know, cause like in Europe, it's interesting. They um, they first they ban them. Now they have labels where they're um, on the foods that are uh, have food dyes. And even McDonald's, you know, I'm not saying go out and eat McDonald's, but in Europe, the their strawberry sundae is 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 colored with real strawberries. And here it's like FDC number two, red red dye number two. So um, so yeah, it's very pervasive. So it's really something to to pay attention to, and it's a pretty easy mm -hmm. thing, I think, to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to notice. Um, I wish another... we held our, I wish we mm -hmm. held our food industry to higher standards because right. it costs a little bit more to swap out red dye with beet juice, right? Because that's a common food color mm -hmm. in natural foods. Yes. You know, it, it doesn't change the, the cost. That, and, and I will say, I, I recently heard an interview with Mark Hyman who he mm -hmm. said, Burger King just released a, um, 
a no preservative or a preserve, you know, a, a <laughs> healthier version of the Whopper. Now we're not going to debate the, <laughs> right. and he was not debating the healthiness of fast food. But the point is when big conglomerate organizations start paying attention, that mm -hmm. means we're doing something right. That means your voice Beth is being heard. So mm -hmm. I think that's great. I just wanted to mention one other thing that people may not be aware of in their food is that, you know, everyone knows it's important to eat organic and all that. But did you know that glyphosate, which is found in Roundup, it's, it's, it's a weed killer, herbicide. So um, yeah. it's sprayed routinely, you know, on GM crops like corn and soy. So I think a lot of people are aware of that. But what I have discovered um, not too long ago is that farmers are now allowed to spray glyphosate on wheat and um, oats. So at harvest time, to, as a drying agent, a desiccant. So if you're not eating organic oats or wheat, for example, um, you're getting a big dose of glyphosate. And so th that has been shown to be very, very toxic. And there's lawsuits out there now um, you know, against Monsanto. So um, in fact, I'm executive producing a film called A New Resistance, just about glyphosate and how toxic it is and how we really need to stop its use and sale. So um, that film's coming out Absolutely. This, this summer. So yeah. Oh, is it really? Great. Yeah. So we'll share that information. But okay. I agree with you. When it comes to fragrances and scents, there's parabens, there's phthalates, there's things like that we're concerned about. When it comes to food, Roundup, glyphosate, um, pesticides, chemicals, things like that we have mm -hmm. to worry about. And and I know, again, I loved how you started this by saying we're not trying to cause a panic here. Um, the beauty is, and I know you've mentioned the Environmental Working Group, they've got that wonderful list of the dirty, you know, the 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 dirty dozen. And right, the and the clean 15. 15. Uh -huh. Right, so the most dirtiest foods, if you just focus there, sure. you're eliminating. Like, if I... Like strawberries, apples, and peaches. Mm -hmm. Even if you focus on those three, it's a right. huge difference. It's huge. But you know, the other, the other big, huge one that a lot of people are not aware of is spinach and kale are way up there in pesticide residues, way up there. So, and that's new. That's new over right. the last five years because yes. we used to say broccoli, spinach, and kale were at the bottom. You know, they were right. the clean 15. They were yes. so good for you. Right. So this just is proof that as we start rotating crops, you know, kale's more popular. So farmers start growing more kale. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not putting it into organic fields. They're putting it to where they grew the last soy batch, right? Right. And so that's picking up all kinds of things and kale especially uh, if right. you do a little research you'll find it's it's a wonderful sponge at pulling <laughs> yes. some pretty bad stuff out of the earth <laughs> right it's so true including heavy metals but you know that's yes. it's like so, some people think well i'm you know having a green smoothie every morning well okay and, and they're throwing handfuls of kale and spinach in their smoothies well good for you but is it organic because if it's not then it's you know i really believe there, there need, you need to weigh, you know, the, the benefits. And, and I think that pesticides and, and glyphosate are much um, more dangerous than people really think. And it's much more dangerous to have that. I mean, swap it, swap out with a different vegetable or, or fruit. Yeah. And if I could add one more mm -hmm. thing to this, because this is such a great topic. And again, this podcast is evolving ageless. So it's not about radical change all at once. It's about finding small tips here and there that allow you to change your environment, which will impact the way you age. And so I know if I went through most people's pantries, you've got a box of Cheerios somewhere. <laughs> um, if you're a grandmother, you've got them for your grandkids. If you're a parent, they are the quick go-to snack in those little silicone cups. And I think everyone would be surprised. Tell us about Cheerios. Well, yeah, Cheerios are sprayed. The oats are sprayed with glyphosate. So they have a big residue of that. And, and it, they're not organic. So, you know, they're, you can find organic um, odios, I think they're called, as an easy swap. So um, yeah. really to start paying attention to the, to the fact, because pesticides are, are sprayed um, they destroy the nervous system of bugs. And so, you know, what are they, what are these pesticides doing to our nervous system? We really have to kind of take a look at that. And um, there's That's been great. huge studies that show, you know, the incidence of spraying of glyphosate with rise of diabetes, rise of autism, 
you know, rise of depression and anxiety. It's, it's, they're correlated. It may not be a causal, but it, it's definitely up there. So, And most yeah. of the things you just named are neurological. So let's put mm-hmm. two and two together really easily, right? Like right. neurological toxin, neurological symptoms and diseases. Like, wow. Right. right. Yeah. And Cheerios is the number one cereal on the shelves testing for glyphosate. It's the mm-hmm. highest amount of glyphosate of all cereals on the shelf. Yeah. Who would have guessed? I know. Okay. Yeah. So yes. let's switch. Okay. Let's switch mm-hmm. over to EMFs because this is a really up and coming topic. I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of people have been concerned about EMFs for a long time just because of the fact that our phones, you know, we carry our phones everywhere. There, Some people mm-hmm. still talk on their phone up against their head. Um, we mm-hmm. sleep in an environment that has Wi-Fi whizzing around and things like that. And yes. I will tell you, I have friends that laugh at me. And you know who you are. If you're listening to this, mm-hmm. you're laughing right now because they, oh, Michelle and her EMFs. Tell us, please, because I, <laughs> I'm, yeah, maybe I'll learn right. something okay. um, contrary well, to what I believe. But. No, it's, it's really bad. I mean, the thing is that because of our, our phones getting more and more powerful, but and also the Wi-Fi routers have gotten like off the charts. So in fact, just, I have, I had two clients back to back yesterday, the day before, um, they wanted me to measure their fields. And so the, the whole house, I have these three devices I measure and the whole house is kind of calm. And then I get into their home office and this is where they spend all their time. One of them's writing a book and the other one's on the phone all the time and just at her computer. And both of them had their Wi-Fi router right next to them. One of them had it at chest level and this woman is having heart palpitations. She keeps, you know, going to the doctor and having a monitor put on her. It's like, and I'm, and the field was unbelievable. Okay. So a normal field and the best would be zero. Okay. So, but I haven't found that very much. So I, I say around a thousand, if you could get it a thousand or under is kind of, sometimes it's the best you can do. Her field by her um, Wi-Fi router was 45,000. Can you imagine? 45,000. So, and I, so you got, really so we my unplugged it right here the, oh. <laughs> i can literally point to my router You're, <laughs> i'm not i'm just fessing up okay <laughs> well, and then the second woman same thing she had her router she had a cordless phone which was big and then she had her sonos that was another big one um, i love speaker. sonos the, the little speaker right but and she had it all in her little office area so she was she was being hit by three different waves you know and she has, she has rashes, she's got hives, you know. Anyway, so this just happened yesterday, but I know that, um, you know, we move. So one of the things, moving the router, you want to move it as far away from you as, as you can. It drops off with distance. The other thing I told her to do is to get um, a router guard. And they're on my website. You can go to, I have a, a whole section called Recommended Products on BethGreer.com. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I've we'll done include the, all of that in the yes, show notes. I've done the research, you know, so I know what works and what doesn't work. So I get a router guard; it's going to drop the field even more. But um, she also had a metal filing cabinet, and so metal will block the field. So, um, so we put the router behind the metal uh, cabinet, and it brought it down like just to about a thousand. It went from forty-five thousand, you know, that far down. So I w- I felt a lot better. But the thing, the message here is turn your Wi-Fi router off at night when you sleep, 100%. I mean, that is like the most critical thing. And if you're not using it, turn it off. Don't sit in it all day long and be bathed in it. So for you, if you can move it, you know, get yourself a longer cord, move it either to another room or get a router guard on it so to protect yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny because we make all of these technology, this progress, with technology by having Wi-Fi everywhere in our home, but good old-fashioned plugging it in, um, <laughs> you actually get better reception, right? Oh, yes. And my husband yeah. and I have had this conversation. Like, it's just, to, we used to always be wired, hardwired, we call it, right? We right, always exactly. had our Wi-Fi, pl- I mean, our routers plugged into our computers, we actually get better reception that way anyway, better performance anyway. So right. we talked that, about going back to that. Right. It is a good thing to do. The, the only issue is, um, like, if you're like me, I have a monitor and then I have a laptop. So if I want to take my laptop in another room, I would need the Wi-Fi for that. So you're kind of mm-hmm. locked. If you're plugged in, you, you're kind of locked into that space. But 
it's not so terrible, you know. Um, so yeah, um, that's a really big thing. You know, don't sleep with the cell phone obviously next to you while you're sleeping. Or put it in airplane mode. I put mine in my bathroom now to charge, I, and I, I use it as an alarm clock. I could still hear it. Um, I also the other thing that I've been doing lately, which has been amazing, and it's so simple. I've been unplugging everything from my bedroom. So in other words, the the table lamps or any anything that's plugged into the wall, because even if it's not turned on, even if those lamps are not turned on, if it's plugged in, it's creating a field, an electrical field. So we, you know, we are electrical beings. Our cells communicate electrically. And we, when we're surrounded by so much electricity, it's really, I mean, think about how great you feel when you go to the beach or out in the forest or out on your lawn, right? Uh, you just, it, it's, you're grounded, you're with the earth. When you're around electricity, it amps us up. So if people are having trouble sleeping, you know, try that. Getting all the electronics out of your bedroom. I've been to people's homes where they sleep with the laptop under the bed turned on in case they have an idea in the middle of the night they want to, you know, write it, write it down. It's like, okay, well, what happened to the old pen and paper and a flashlight? You know, you can use that. <laughs> so um, anyway, just try to get as much electronics out of your really do that out of your uh, out of your bedroom and maybe un try unplugging everything and it just i mean the whole field just just i just felt the whole everything just went down like you know 10 times it's interesting i stayed with a friend um in minnesota earlier well last year during last year and at night they turn everything off everything every the router goes off the, mm -hmm. they turned i even think they turned their electricity off everything goes off mm -hmm. um and then their cell phones are alarm clocks and they're in airplane mode and so this was unusual to me i mean i, I mean i i've i go with the spectrum right i try everything and see what it feels that was a really quite peaceful sleep i will say that right? there was a noticeable yeah. difference to my mm -hmm. sleep and the first time i heard about this was when a friend said to me you don't sleep with your phone in airplane mode like, cause I travel and I'm on the road and, and I said, no. And she said, try it. And so every day, so all, what I would say is if this sounds crazy, just for a week, put your phone in airplane mode and sleep and see if you notice a slight difference in your sleep. Yeah. Um, I also know a lot of people use power strips for, you know, everything we have is plugged in. Right. So you don't even have to, I mean, you can unplug it. You can just unplug one plug from the wall, which exactly. makes it right. easier, right? Yes. To not feel like you have to go around and unplug everything and then plug everything else in the morning. Well, that's true. Um, yeah. No, that's yeah. true. It's a good mm -hmm. point. Um, well, sometimes it's it. hard to plug. If you have t two lamps and stuff on either side of the bed, you're not going to yeah, right. necessarily put it on a power strip. But yeah, I've just noticed a tremendous difference and it just feels great. So awesome. Yeah, I try so to tell get Tell us about you know, 5G. Tell us what the deal is with 5G because it's very different and it's coming. It's in a few cities now in the US, but they're testing it. And the plan is that, you know, if everyone knows we're on 4G right now, right? right. And yes. we were on 3G. If you remember your old cell phone, it was on 3G. That's right. So the mm -hmm. thing about four, uh, 5G is that, yeah, they're going to be putting these small cells on um, almost, you know, every 300 feet or whatever in front of our homes and, and office buildings and all that. So um, first of all, it's untested. No one is doing any tests on human beings. And so that is very alarming. There's been a petition that's been signed by um, over 2,000 doctors. It's maybe even more now saying that we need to halt until there can be some research done. Um, I know that uh, in my area, they've halted it um, because it would change the property values. They, wo they won't hear health um, reasons. You know, it's just very interesting. Uh, the FCC, you know, just says we're not even listening to health um, reasons uh, on how to stop it. But um, so it's... let's take a step back. So mm -hmm. today with 4G, you might see one of those tall towers. Sometimes they make them look like trees. Sometimes they decorate them. But these tall towers that are cell towers, and they might be a few miles apart, right? They're yes. not close right. in proximity. Right. These and are going so, to be in front of our homes. They're going to be placing them in front of our homes. So that so 5G we, is placed more close together. Close together. They're called ago. small cells. And so what it's going to do, it's really about the internet of things so that our, so that our homes can become smart. So you, your refrigerator and your, you can talk to your refrigerator, you can talk to your oven, you know, 
I don't even think we really need this, but um, it seems to be on the horizon. And um, so here's what I know that um, Wuhan, which is the source of the virus, um, it w was a 5G epicenter. Like they, it was a test city. So I don't know, you know, people are talking about that there could be a link that it could have weakened the immune system. It could, all I know is there's some correlation between where 5G is and where there's a big um, influx of the virus now. Also in Washington State, which is where Microsoft is, I mean, they're, you know, they have a, a lot of people who are impacted. So I don't know, you know, what, if it's, if it's uh, related or it's a coincidence, but it just seems like an interesting coincidence to me. So it's something that uh, we're just not, I mean, if you think back 20 years ago, we, we didn't have all this. And so now we're, we're we need to adapt. And it's, um, I think that our bodies are, you know, have a hard time handling it. It's going to impact um, how our cells communicate with one another and that's why it's very important to keep our home environment as toxin free as possible because if 5G does roll out, you want to make sure that inside your home is as quiet as possible and without any other toxins that are impacting because it, it creates a body burden on us, right? So with all of the, the chemicals and EMFs and all that, it's, sometimes it's just, it's too much and people are becoming hypersensitive to, to first to chemicals and now there's, there's this whole subset of people who are becoming hypersensitive to electromagnetic fields. It's a great point because going back to, we call this evolving ageless because over time we can make changes to living ageless and I'm bringing it full circle because our personal evolution as a species does not evolve quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We, we may be able to evolve our mentality and evolve our lifestyle and evolve our health pretty quickly, but we don't evolve as a species quickly. And so because I think if I could just sum it up, we are not exposed to these chemicals. We were not exposed to these, you know, our environment when man began, regardless of your belief system, we all agree we walk the earth without cell phones and without right. chemicals and without Roundup. We grew mm -hmm. crops without crops, without chemicals. Right. We, we washed ourselves without chemicals. So it's interesting to me that, that we, we are not, our bodies are not evolving um, as humans to these environmental things. And that's why I think at mm -hmm. the crux of it all, it's so important to just hear it, learn it, educate ourselves and decide what of those things work for us. But, mm -hmm. you know, Beth, I, I, it's wonderful to have you here kind of as a journalist, as a, as a documentary producer. I think, I think it's great to know that there are people like you out there that are exposing and bringing things to the surface for us to learn from. Um, and so if you go to ageless, evolving ageless.com, uh, you'll see this particular episode in the show notes. There's a link to Beth's website. Um, she has a book, Supernatural Home. There's a link there for that. And she also has a new ebook called The Simple Ways to Protect Yourself from EMFs and 5G Cellular Wireless. Uh, mm -hmm. That's an ebook that you can also download. So, Beth, thank yeah. you so much today oh. for sharing your wisdom you're welcome and uh, you know just the last thought just get out in nature just be in, be in the sun it's so healing um don't be afraid of that. it and slather yourself up with you know lots of chemicals but just be out in nature as much as possible and get you know get grounded be be with the earth and just try to be as uh, as natural as possible supernatural right <laughs> that's supernatural that's mom yeah. that's right yeah take off your okay. shoes and stand mm -hmm. barefoot. Yes, in beautiful. The grass. When you're at soccer practice mm -hmm. with your kids, or if you're if you're out with the grandkids, mm -hmm. take off your shoes for a moment and just yeah. feel what it feels like to be reconnected. I love yeah. it, Beth. Great. Thank you so much sure. again. Thank you. All, mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. everyone. So continue on for the next week. Keep on living ageless and tell us what things you've learned in this episode that you're going to apply and start your evolution. Have a great week, everyone. Bye now.